that if you open a suitcase full of a hundred dollar bills and you look at the brain of the person who is looking at that, at that pile of money, the person sees the money as something really valuable. Now, if you start talking with him and, you know, you have a long philosophical discussion, then yes, in the end, maybe he will agree that, ah, actually, it's just a convention. But the immediate experience of the person looking at the pile of money is, you know, immense greed and even a willingness to kill for it. And uh, it's the same, you know, with corporations. If you tell somebody that, you know, Google is just a story or uh, uh, General Motors is just a story, then yes, if you sit for a long philosophical discussion or legal discussion, they will understand what you mean. But in most cases, in everyday experience, we treat these entities as if they are completely real. Yeah, it's also worth pointing out that we can get locked in to these conventions in ways that create an immense amount of needless suffering. And you must know Alan Watts, the great popularizer of Eastern philosophy from the, the 60s and yes. 70s. He told a an amusing story. I'm sure he told this a hundred times, but he, when he's talking about the Great Depression in this vein and talking about the, the concept of money, he pointed out that money is an abstraction, kind of like an inch, right, or any unit of measurement. And so the way our economy fell into the, the abyss after the Great Depression was to some degree a matter of our not being able to free ourselves from this convention. And, and so he talked about, you know, what happened in the Great Depression was like a construction worker showing up on the job and the foreman says, sorry, no more work today. We've run out of inches, right? And the idea of running out of money when there's still houses to be built and still people who want them and there was no less work to be done, but we couldn't coordinate our work given what had happened to the economy. These abstractions obviously have enormous power. Yeah, and, and also I would say that if you would talk with, uh, you know, like a theologian, then he will tell you, well, I also, we, we also know that God is not this old man, old angry man in the sky that gets upset if you, if, if I don't know, if, if you don't uh, follow his orders. Okay, um, I've seen already that part of the podcast, and I know that's where he pretty much stops talking or gives mention to Alan Watts. So, Pandora's box has been opened, and I am just excited to have this interaction happen. I, I really would love it if Sam Harris would try to interact uh, more, do a whole podcast even on just the full body of Alan Watts's work and where he and Watts completely diverge or agree. I mean, after all, they're both oriented on Zen Buddhism and... Uh, I think Alan Watts has proved, I think, himself to anybody who's ever seen him, I'm pretty sure, it might be pre presumptuous, uh, that he is a profound motherfucking guru. Okay, let's leave it there.